Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. You guys have asked us to do a kind of seasonal end of year video looking at the currently available DCS modules and give our opinions and recommendations. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go by them one by one as quickly as possible. Nothing here will be scripted. We've not been told to say anything or not say anything. And the same with my guys, you can say whatever you want. In terms of format, I'll say a little bit about the aircraft and then you guys come in and try and be as concise as we can and we'll get through as many as we can viewers it's going to take a while probably at least an hour so please get your coffee and get ready one more thing i apologize profusely for my voice i'm really struggling i've had all the throat sweets i can stomach uh, but we'll just do our best so we're going to start here on the official page so we'll start with the latest aircraft f15e by rasbam this is an interesting one when it came out i didn't have a huge amount of interest in it i know everyone else did but i didn't uh, my thought was oh no not another horrendously over complex multi-system fourth gen aircraft to learn and remember but you guys requested i do some tutorials and i started doing that and i started reading the 600 page manual and getting more and more into it and the more i got into it the more i started falling in love with it it's kind of it's very complex but manageable and it's kind of quirky I would describe as well and a little bit awkward compared to some aircraft like a, an F-18 and it's not actually that uh how do I say this it's not super overpowered so one of the reasons I'm not into the Hornet so much and I take the PP out of it viewers is because it's so good and that's what happens when something is really 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 good and I take the PP out of it the F-15E isn't hugely good in that it can't shoot things 150 miles away the best weapon really it's got is a jdam so it's a challenge and to do missions against even kind of 1980 sams is quite challenging and i like that i like the underdog and so it's really grown on me and i've kind of fallen in love it's now the main thing i fly uh weirdly enough to give it kind of some kind of structure let me just blast through the uh, standard stuff it's multi-crew so you can have a guy in the front and a guy in the rear and both can fly the plane and do pretty much the same stuff more or less it's a land-based aircraft obviously it's a very powerful air-to-air -air and air-to-ground mapping radar with loads of features navigation it has eggy uh, or can have eggy so that's gps and ins which is really good it has tacan uh, it has ils i can't remember whether it is adf or not um, it has a teapot. It's a ghastly one from the 1980s, early 80s it has at the moment, but it will come, I think, with a better one later on. Uh, weapons, air-to-air. -air. It has uh, mid-90s AMRAMs, uh, medium-range missiles. It has early 80s Sidewinders, close range and a gun, air-to-ground weapons, an assortment of dumb bombs, cluster bombs, laser guided bombs that can self guide and it's just got its JDAMs and it's probably going to have a bunch more stuff coming out but I don't actually know what maybe the boys can fill me in on that. In terms of graphics, interior and exterior it's about as good as it gets as you'd expect. Inside looks beautiful, outside looks beautiful, absolutely no complaints at all. Sounds, some people like it and some people don't. I am a liker, I think the cockpit sound, the levels are perfect. One thing that bugs me in DC Yes, is really loud cockpit or really quiet cockpit. This is nice and balanced. I'd have to mess around with my sounds. Outside, it sounds, I think, the best plane to be honest. So that stuff's good. Kinematics, um, I quite like that they haven't made it an OP thing. It doesn't dogfight like a friggin' F-16. They haven't tried to make it win all the dogfights. It feels like a giant heavy bomber. And well, because it is a giant heavy bomber. And I like that. It, it, again, it's quirky. It makes it feel not overpowered. A bit of an underdog, so I like it. Flight model. Um, well, I don't know what a real F-15E feels like, but it all feels, as far as I'm concerned, realistic. So I'm happy with the flight model, and I've got no problems with that. Do I think it's worth the money? Absolutely. Yep. Um, like I said, you're not going to be shooting cruise missiles 150 miles, or not at the moment anyway, but it's really good fun, especially if you have a mate in the back, and I often have Simba. I think the module's quite resource-heavy, but... It seems very true to life. It uh, handles as you'd expect. The systems are a little bit, as Cap says, sort of 80s, 90s. They're a little bit behind the, the, the cutting edge that you get in some of the other modules like the F-18, but I do like it. I, I, I haven't got into it yet, but I think I will be flying it a lot. The other thing I really like is the noises it makes on startup. It's just excellent. Mm -hmm. It's probably the airplane I fly the most, too. I like the way the systems are put together, and once you get into it a little bit, it's not quite as quirky as some of them, and it's actually... Well, I've got the Cougar input, so it's easier for me to, to set this thing up than most any of the other aircraft. Plus, it's my favorite one to fly at night. It's still early access, so like very much a newer plane to the game. So we all know like these 
planes take years developing before we see them. They take years of developing once they hit early access. So I'm excited to see where this plane's going, what they've implemented so far. I think they've done, they have actually done really well with, uh, it's like cap said, nothing's overpowered. I don't feel like anything is like just subpar as in like something that's just like deal breaking. Oh, you got this wrong with the airplane. Uh, I would say if I had any complaints, it would be the actual, the manual learning, like reading the manual, trying to get stuff right for tutorials, just stuff is kind of all over the place. Uh, we find ourselves like going back and forth hundreds of pages within the manual to try and link things together. So if I, if there was one thing I would request to get better on, it's that manual. I think that manual can be very daunting to somebody that doesn't have a lot of background in the game. And if this was like a first plane they were trying to learn and they were trying to read the manual, they're going to get real lost real quick. Fair comment. I'm really into the ED manual manuals. I think they're very well written, but some of the third party are difficult to follow. Yeah, I, I like it. I just, um, I'm a bit like Simba. It's To me, it still needs that development process. It's still lacking some stuff, especially if you're trying to do dual cockpit stuff in a multiplayer server. There seems to be a weird desync. So sometimes the rear seat is doing their work, and then when the front seat comes to drop it, it doesn't drop or it goes the wrong way. There still needs to be a little tweaking um, for it to be an, an excellent module. It's a good module. It needs to be a little more tweaked to be excellent. I can't wait to see the sniper pod and more ordnance be able to come on it. Uh, to expound on what Bird said about front backseat cooperability, there is no functional gesture or George functionality. And I find that extremely daunting and unwieldy, especially as a person who primarily flies the F-15 by myself. I, I would rather have, I would really like to see some kind of AI system implemented in the F-15 to take it to that next level. Isn't that interesting how client specific it is then? Because I'm the opposite sock. I hate the AI just, I'm aware that the F-14 needs it and has to have it, but I prefer the F-15 without it. I wouldn't, I hate that kind of AI douchebag in the back. And I like the F-15 because you can operate 99% from the front seat. So that's just a different way we think about things. F-18, viewers, uh, specifics first. It's non-multi-crew, obviously. It's fully carrier capable. Powerful air-to-air -air and air-to-ground mapping radar. Navigation, again, EGI, GPS, INS, TACAN, ILS, and ADF. So every type of navigation ever invented, pretty much. Uh, it has two T-pods. I've forgotten what ones they are, but they're both modern and very good air to air weapons similar to the uh, f-15 in the 1990s amram or up to that i should say also as a early 2000s block one aim 9x sidewinder high off ball sight modern sidewinder and a helmet mounted display for air to air and it, i think it can be used to air to ground graphics outside are maybe not as good as the brand new ones but good inside very good as good as you know the well it is old now isn't it god it's five years old guys isn't that weird Sounds, uh, I'm not a fan of the sounds uh, in the cockpit is so overbearing for me with a constant I think they've just tried to make it so realistic that it puts giant hiss in it drives me absolutely nuts But okay, some people like it outside it sounds fine Kinematics, um, I would I would say kind of 8 out of 10. I've always found it a bit floaty But I obviously don't fly a real hornet, so I don't know how realistic that is uh, but generally pretty good flight model um otherwise is, is spot on with no other major problems um my personal views are that um this is it's the best plane in game viewers if you want to overall if you want to blow stuff up on the ground this is the one it has everything it has long range missiles powered missiles slams j cells jdams bombs of every description color and creed it's just so vastly multi-role and that's kind of the one of the reasons why i don't like it that much it's the big dog it's the one that everyone wants because it can do everything and it bores me a bit unlike the eagle which is kind of finicky and a bit awkward and a bit ugly in the way that you have to do things this is super you know i call it the green button because you press one button and basically something blows up 500 miles away so that's why it's just not my type of thing. Now, the vast majority of you don't think like me and you want that. And so you go and buy that. And that's why it's the best selling module. And that's great. Uh, but that's why I take the PP out of it. I just not that into it because I prefer more of a challenge. It's one of the best BVR fighters. It's probably overall the best dog fighter. Some of you may disagree and definitely the best air to ground. Is it worth the money? Obviously, yes, it's technically the best thing here. But that's my view. You guys? Yeah, it's my favorite module. Uh, does everything very well. Just has a little bit of a thing against some something like the F-16 in BVR. But 
all as an all-rounder it's epically good the module doesn't take up a lot of resources it flies really nicely it's very minor complaints about things certain aspects of the flight model but it, it is my favorite model it does everything it does it pretty intuitively you know carrying landings and stuff it's epic when people ask for a high fidelity module what's your recommendation i'll always say f-18c it's the one plane that has ordnance carrier capability to do pretty much every aspect of what you can do in dcs the one size fits all you can do carrier stuff you can do anti-shipping you can do ground you can do seed work you can do air to air work it's a really great jack of all trades airplane much like the one in real life which is why the navy went with it it's a really well done module ed's put a lot of time and resources into trying to get it as close to right as they can like matrix you know i've got my little complaints here and there when it comes to minute things within the flight model uh it is a great dog fighter if i were to complain i would say i wish i just wish ed would have never put the paddle in but it mm. is an aspect of the airplane so fair is fair overall like yeah i would say it's the must-have airplane and if, if you're looking for a first high fidelity module to go to definitely an airplane to go for the biggest thing that i love about the f-18 is the, like you guys said, versatility. But as a mission maker, I really appreciate that I can fit an F-18 strike to any role that I want. If there's a gap that needs covered, I can rely on an F-18 flight to take care of that for me. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. I can just shove an F-18 in there and let people do their work. Something that I dislike. Well, like you said, the paddles, the paddles are great. I use them, but there's not a lot of recourse. And this is something for all jets in this, I guess. There's not a lot of recourse for overstressing the aircraft, not to the point of breaking or fracture, but cumulative stresses. We don't, we don't model that. And I think if that was modeled, that would take away a lot of the issues that we would have with the paddles. I love the F-18. It's probably because it's probably the first module that I got really involved in. As we said, carrier-based, it can do nearly every role. My only gripe about the F-18 is not really the F-18. It's when I try and go to another module and try and learn it. I, Because I'm so used to the F-18, it makes me want to just go back to it because I know what to do. I need to spend more time on other modules learning them properly because I can just jump on an F-18 and I know what's going on. So, yeah, it's a must-buy. Next is Flaming Cliffs 3. I don't know why this is at the top of this menu, but it is. So, very briefly, in case you're new viewers, you get two types of aircraft in DCS. High fidelity, like F-18, like F-15, where all the buttons and switches are pushed and the systems behind them are modelled or mainly modelled. Big 600-page manuals on all these aircraft. Flaming Cliffs 3 is the other side. It's low fidelity. Almost no or no buttons are pushable. Simplified. Almost arcadey. Now, not, that's not to say that they're not realistic in what they do because they are. The flight models are nearly as good. The weapons are identical. The sensors are mm, similar. So they fit in the game, but they're much simplified. And it's very important to stress that a lot of people... I used to spend... I've been doing this for seven or eight years. I used to spend the first five years trying to help people into DCS. I don't do that anymore for reasons that I probably won't go into here. But uh, so I've got lots of experience of helping people in and a lot of people come in and buy a Hornet or an F-15E or an F-4 or whatever and they get overwhelmed and they leave it and they go and play War Thunder. If some of those people, and that probably includes me by the way, I started with Flaming Cliffs 3, would be best starting off with Flaming Cliffs 3. It's an arcadey way to get in but to get involved in the sim and have a realistic performing aircraft. So I'm not going to go through the details, but there's MiG-29, there's SU-25, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and they're, they're $25 or almost nothing each. And they're good fun and they handle really well. The beauty of Flaming Cliffs is it gives you the fundamental basics of fuel management, energy management, and gives you a nice introductory to air to ground warfare, just like how to approach tactics. But it's, it's like you said, it's not overly modeled. Um, I'd say for me, one of the drawbacks is I feel the G effect is a lot more laxed on it. And those airplanes tend to be a little more durable than a lot mm. of the high fidelity modules. Other mm. than that, no, it's a great entry level plane. FC3, um, great starter pack. You get uh, four aircraft, a ground attack, two fighters, um, you know, Russian and NATO aircraft. Um, they're great, you know, all-rounders. Like, the only small detail, as we've said, is the low fidelity. So 
you do need some good key bindings to get the most out of them. Like, so if you do have a HOTAS, it needs to be fully set up. Like the other for high fidelity, you can get away with some because you can go into the cockpit and click around. These you do need time to set up your bindings, but great um, starter aircraft. My very favorite dogfighter in this game is the Su-27. I love how this jet performs in this. I don't know if it's overmodeled or not, but I, it's just it's just such a wonderful jet for me to fly. The campaigns that are involved with the FC-3 model uh, models are fantastic. They aren't as highly scripted as the other ones. Like for, I've noticed for like the F-14 Tomcat, the FC-3 campaigns like. Uh, the Su-27 ones, are there to put you in the action. It, it is up front, here's the action, have fun. There's so much else you can get. If you're looking for story and stuff like that, there's other modules to get into, but this one really shines by putting you in that cockpit and putting you where the action is right from the get, and I really appreciate that. All right, guys, let's move on. F-16C, we all know this one. Uh, specifics, it's obviously single seat. It is land-based only. It has a moderately powerful air-to-air -air and air-to-ground mapping radar, all the modern navigation that you would expect. It has a very modern T-Pod, similar to the Hornet. Air-to-air -air weapons are the same as the Hornet. Air-to-ground weapons are like a limited version of the Hornet. It has some of the Hornet's weapons, like JDAM, laser-guided bombs. It has various unguided weapons. Uh, guys, does it have a JSAL? Can you remember? A standoff weapon. We've forgotten whether it has JSAL or not. Uh, but it, does, it doesn't have the huge array of the F-18. Graphics, I would say, on par with the F-18 and pretty much up there with the absolute latest sounds debatably the best all round probably the best cockpit sounds overall balanced perfectly tells you exactly what you need to know kinematics it's probably the most kinematically the best aircraft here now how realistic that is i just don't know simba will probably know more than me but acceleration it's definitely the best uh top speed it's very near there low level top speed it's very near there it'll out dogfight almost anything Flight model, uh, some people love it, some people hate it. I'm a lover. I think it feels really nice, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a really high alpha plane. It works with a lot of high angle of attack, but obviously once you've learned that and you get used to it. My personal opinion, um, it's probably my favorite overall. Everyone needs that plane that they can just go to. It's easy to fly, like the Hornet, but it's not as OP personally, I think, as the Hornet. Um, so it's a plane I don't have to practice. If I'm in a mission at any point and I need a plane I can just go to and I know how to use 90% of the stuff, I can just go there. Uh, it's got a big four or 500 page manual, but most of the time you don't need it because you can just figure it out through the screens, press a few buttons and you can get it just by messing around with it. So not a lot of rehearsal needed. Um, not really any annoying points as well. Lots of these modules have annoying things. I'm Damp said he likes it when the wings fall off because of stress. I don't like that. It drives me friggin' nuts. It doesn't have things like that or many things like that that annoy me. So all round, it's my go-to plane. Um, like I said, I'm flying F-15 most at the moment, but it's not my go-to plane. My go-to plane is the F-16. Probably always will be. It's just not good enough to be completely OP, which is great, which means I can love it. Um, and it has its quirks as well. Uh, it's always the one I recommend over the Hornet and everything else. Um, I think it's the one you'll have most fun in. Obviously, if you're into modern fourth gen jets and, and blah, 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 um, it is my favorite. Um, what do you guys think? I'm not a big fan of this module. Uh, I am warming to it, I have to say. I like the systems and the updates they've done recently make it a bit more intuitive and a bit more um, capable. But the thing that really irritates me about this module is the fly module, fly model. It's terrible. I mean, it handles quite nicely, but it's not stable. If you're heavily loaded or not particularly fast, you release the stick, the nose waffles around. It, it's like an overloaded whale. Something like the Viper, if you fly the aircraft and you release the stick, it should instantly bing, stabilize, and it just doesn't, it, the nose wanders around. If you try to air to air refuel at this thing, it's a pain in the ass. You have to work your ass off. Just trying to make keep the thing stable and level enough for the boomer to get the boom in. So much as I'd love to love this uh, module, the handling of the flight model leaves a lot to be desired in my view. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of experience in it, but uh, one thing that's nice um, is the HOTAS interface. It's like the most simple, almost the most simple of the Generation 4 aircraft, which makes it mm -hmm. easier for me to fly. Mm -hmm. And another thing, it does have JSO. 
I'm a 16 lover by trade. Uh, that has some some to do with my background. But I will say, much like the start of the F-16 in real life and the start of the F-18 in real life, they've always been in competition. They've always been in comparison. The F-18 is the Navy's version of the F-16, and you can say the F-16 is the Air Force's version of the, of the F-18. Uh, they are both great multi-role fighters. I agree with Matrix. The the flight model's got some wonkiness. I don't have the problems with air-to-air refueling, but I also spend a lot of time in the 16. Um, but I do agree there there's a lot more flight model tweaking that I think they need to do, and I think some of it has to do with inputs of our HOTASs and how they affect the plane. Aside from that, I think the G model is uh, off in it. It's the one airplane in the game that's got a 30-degree reclined seat specifically designed to increase pilot g sustainability and then I'd, I'd say the other quirk is like you said like when it's it just reacts way too too much when one munition comes off i've seen in real life a pilot jettison just one wing tank and not even notice that he lost the wing tank so i feel like the the flight model reacts a little too much to when munitions come off other than that, it is a, it is a fun module. Love it. Uh, same problems. Fly by wire model should be tweaked better. That it uh, it um is more stable when you're off stick. Um, but yeah, love the aircraft. Great aircraft. I, I definitely say it's a hundred percent buy this if if you want a fun fast jet that you want to take into the merge with diff with a different thought process than just fast turn. Sorry, also, it doesn't have a crossbow in the canopy. So as far as oh, like yeah. flying around maps, visual, like doing low flights through mountains and just, just enjoying the, the feel of flight, especially in VR, just not having mm -hmm. that crossbow just gives you so much more immersion to the game and it's it's one of the beauties of the plane one amazing point simba's just made so you see this little bow viewers where my uh mouse is and another one all planes have that apart from the f-16 which has just glass or composite in front of you such a clear view now the bow isn't a huge problem with uh vr of course you can kind of move your head around it but if with flat screen like i use man especially the f-14 it takes up like 50 percent of your view and it drives you nuts f-16 that's just so nice being able to see stuff. Guys, we better move on to the Tomcat. Tomcat specifics, multi-crew. Uh, the rear guy does not fly the plane. The rear guy just does the radar and some other systems like that. So it's a little bit different. It's obviously carrier and land base. Um, massively powerful, although not necessarily easy to use because 1960s, early 70s radar does not have air to ground function just air to air function nav it has non eggy so it's ins so watch out for ins drift it will have tacan i suspect yeah it does and it will have ils um it has a teapod again like the f15 it's an old cranky teapod 1970s lantern true to life obviously how it was back then it's usable but it's not like a modern super modern teapod so bear in mind that at uh, weapons um uh, 1970s phoenix which is to be honest pretty ghastly everyone says they're great in dcs they're certainly not i don't think they're very good anyway um sparrows probably its go-to weapon overall nowadays um and 1980s sidewinders air to ground weapons an assortment of dumb bombs laser guided bombs that it can self laze no gps ins weapons and i think that's it it comes in two flavors a and b b with better engines and a couple of change systems uh graphics are probably interior exterior the best in the game probably unsurpassed so far most people will probably agree with me sounds generally pretty good I, I still get annoyed by the flyby, which is problematic. Uh, kinematics, yeah, pretty decent. No complaints there. Flight model as well, decent. I can't think of anything to complain about, so just good overall. Uh, my personal opinions of this plane, um, I do have a problem with it in that uh, I make videos, uh, viewers, and I make quite high def videos. So I'll go and do a mission, I'll fly the plane, I'll come back, I'll then reload the mission through the record file because DCS always keeps a record file of every mission you run and reshoot it through to get all the exterior views because I like these big high fidelity videos where you see in my cockpit but you also see what's happening outside and I get that from the record file. Because of the way that uh, Tomcat works, at least the last time I tried it, that record file with the Tomcat only gets corrupted. And that's really frustrating. Now, that means I can't fly it. Simple as that. So I fly it 
literally when I do a uh, uh, flight where I don't have to make a video, it's the only time I get to fly. It's a real shame, but that's life, so suck it up. There's plenty of other planes to fly. Um, otherwise, um, I enjoy, enjoy flying it. That said, I don't really like the, a, the way you have to deal with the rear. You have to deal with the rear, the guy in the back. 99% of the time, that's going to be an AI, and you have to deal with it through this big kind of clumsy flower system where you kind of click on different commands. And I'm not complaining because I'm aware it's the only way to do it. Uh, so they've had no choice but to do it. But, you know, do I like it? No, not really. But it's hard to find human Rios, as I'm sure you would all agree. I'll be honest, I'll get a lot of game crashes with this, but I don't get with other aircraft. Is that specific to me? I don't know. Probably but I do. But otherwise, top notch and, you know, infinite amount of time has gone into doing it and it won't compete in air to air with F-16, really, F-15 uh, and F-18. Its weapons are just a, that bit older, but it's, you know, only on the edge of fourth gen, really. So don't really expect to compete. It's very quirky, very quirky, even more so than the F-15 with all little awkward bits here and there. And I like that. It gives it character and I love character. So all around, I'm biased against it, unfortunately, because I can't use it. But I still think it's great. And I think it's definitely worth the money. Just bear in mind, it's a bit more niche than the multi-role fighters. Guys, Tomcat. The entire bit about the model and the replay, the replay being broken with it, that's all been fixed. They redid the entire track system and all of that was fixed for all of the aircraft. So it, it no longer has that problem. Roger, we'll try. Heat blur... It's kind of a gold standard when it comes to these third-party modules. The amount of detail they put in, the amount of time they put in, and when the product comes comes out, you can find flaws, but you you're really like getting into the weeds to find the flaws. I love how the airplane moans and creaks at you as you're pulling G's. Uh, the flight model is you have to fly the airplane. It's 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 a real pilot's plane it's not just let go of the stick and everything's fine you know fine and dandy uh you'll lose lift in the wings like you will a warbird the afterburner sound is amazing uh jester you get a love-hate relationship with him uh sometimes you're like jester just can't find a barn if it was sitting in front of his face and other days you'll be like jester can find something on the ground with the teapot and talk you on the target and you're just like you're so glad you had jester doing the targeting pot and not yourself uh, it's a love-hate plane, but Tomcat is a legend of the American skies. It's a great module, I think, of like all the uh, flight sims out there. That if you want to get into a Tomcat and have your Maverick fantasies, the heat blur, heat blurs, F-14, NDCS is top shelf. From the contrary point of view, it's uh, my one of my least favorite model modules in. DCS. It's not to say anything about the quality of the model. The quality is really good. It does seem a little bit resource heavy. To me, um, flying the damn thing, and I think it is reproduced very accurately in the way it handles the noises and all that kind of stuff. So, so it is fun in that regard, but it's it's just an antique. And the problems with the Phoenix, as the way the model in DCS is very frustrating because it basically detracts from the main role of the aircraft very significantly. I am sort of getting the hang of it, but it's never going to be my favorite module. It's the model that wanted me to get into DCS because everyone watched the original Top Gun. Everyone wants to fly an F-14. It's just such a cool aircraft. Um, my only downside is I wish I'd probably got into it before the F-18 because when you go from a modern aircraft to this, the F-14, you really have to learn how to fly it um, because the F-18, F-16, they'll save you if you do something stupid. The F-14 will punish you. Um, if you have the time, it is a fantastic aircraft to fly. The, As Matrix pointed out, I think the Phoenixes are bugged. Um, they're not as great as you... Well, firstly, I think people think the Phoenix is an amazing missile, and it will kill everything 400 miles away. It won't. But the Phoenixes right now, I think, in DCS, do have a bug, and they're not as uh, capable as they should be. But it's a fantastic module. It does, yeah. Mate, you want to pretend you're Maverick in Top Gun, it's a great aircraft. Um, looks great, sounds great. Uh, just it will bite you in the backside if you do something stupid. The kinematic modeling of the Tomcat, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, but the Tomcat does have a record in the DCS regime of having the highest sustained turn rate. And I yep. can tell you that... In a two-circle fight with me and a Su-27, the, the only aircraft that I fear is the Tomcat. 
a, a Tomcat with a highly skilled pilot in a two circle fight is is unbeatable. Agree. In a in a gun fight. Yeah, you're almost and right. Yeah. That from there, it's it's absolutely amazing. It's what got me into DCS. To this day, it's my it's my most fun aircraft to fly. All right, guys, well done. Let's move on to supercarrier. I don't have much to say about this. It's a carrier or a series of aircraft carriers and DCS. It's DCS's attempt to make a high fidelity version of it. So you have the crews running around on the deck and they tell you where to go and, and you have to follow their orders and hook your airplane up and take off. And, and when you come and land, then you have to go through. Or you, so you don't have to. You can just go land if you want but you can go through a series of realistic type uh, li liaisons with the carrier that tells you how to land where to get in your marshal stack and all stuff like that and i've done some videos on it for me it's the epitome of what i'm not interested in milsim naval uh thing but i'm aware that a lot of you will love this um so i'm going to pass it on to the boys yeah it's one of those modules that you buy because it adds a lot to the game but you install it and you don't think of anything about it. You just It's a basically a place to park your carrier-based fighter. I just think if you are doing a lot of naval operations in the F-18, F-14, it's worthy to get because it adds that more um, immersion into the experience. So, yeah, if you're going to be a big carrier-based uh, fighter um, or operator, why not? It, um, yeah, the mod, you get all the models on the side of the aircraft, um, which do take up a bit of resources, but um, it does make it look a bit more like a real-life operating carrier. Following the development plan and what uh, Edie has been teasing for what's coming out in the future with it, it's uh, it's going to add some non-flying uh, fun that you can do in the game. I, I look forward to seeing the updates, the big updates that Edie has planned for it. Sounds like they're trying to bring them uh, to public in the near future. Keep your eye out for the future of the Super Carrier module and what they're doing with it. Does anyone know if this will be quite an important point if you have a multiplayer server which a lot of play people play on it has a super carrier in it and you don't have the super carrier installed and you've got your f-18 can you still operate from that carrier can you take off can you spawn on it can you land on it or does it just magically block you obviously we've got no way of testing because we all have it i was going to say from what i understand um you need the a, a different carrier for non-super carrier people because the wires will not catch on it for a person that that doesn't have the module super carrier is always oh man it's going to be so cool when fill in the blank and it's always look at this really cool thing that they're about to do it's just around the corner i'm excited for what super carrier's future is but if i'm only going to go off of what super carrier has delivered so far I don't think it's worth the $24.99 at half price. I'm excited for what it will have, and maybe it will be worth that. But from what I've seen so far, if I was just going off that, I, I wouldn't spend the money. Roger, that's a valid concern. Uh, absolutely stock. And that's something to think about as well at the time it takes to make these. So Hornet came out in early 2018. So that is it's either five or six years ago. I can't work it out in my head from now. And it's not it's not finished yet, is it, guys? It's still being developed five or six years later. Yep. And I'm not. They still call it. Yeah, so it's still early still access. Still call it early access. No, I'm not complaining, viewers. That's what we sign up for. It's what we pay our money for, and, and so be it. But just bear in mind, these things can take more than half a decade to make. So yeah, Super Carrier, I'm sure, is no exception. Uh, anything else in Super Carrier, guys, or shall I move on? Well, everybody has it. It's almost like it's mandatory to have it if you're going to do any kind of <laughs> naval ops. That's probably the most important point here, right? Yeah. If you joined it, you join Grim Reapers, you have to have it. So, yeah, fair enough, guys. All right, let's move on uh, to some bigger modules, guys. Um, AH-64. Oh, man, this one's really embarrassing for me, I'm afraid, viewers. But that's my life. I'm basically one big embarrassment. Um, so, it came out, I don't know, a year ago into early access. And it came out a bad time when I felt that the main core developers were treating me or GR very badly. And so, I deliberately didn't learn it properly. So, I'm stuck in this position now where I never actually learned it properly. I never sat down and went through the manual. And I take off and fire some missiles, but I don't really know anything about it otherwise. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Do I go back and start and learn it properly and do all the videos and stuff or, or not? So for that reason, I'm kind of stuck. I don't really know it, but I'll go through the basics. Multi-crew, yes, you can have a pilot in the rear and a human gunner in the front. And I think both can fly it, share various systems. And I'm sure all of that stuff is very well modeled, like I, I don't know at the moment. Obviously, it's uh, land-based, but it can operate from uh, aircraft carriers if you want. Perfectly fine. It's got. N it will have a air-to-ground radar. It does not have it yet. Um, navigation. I don't know. 
Sorry. Uh, teapod, uh, yeah, kind of, yeah, the, the guy at the front there uh, has a, a sensor suite of IR and kind of visual sensors at the front there, but again, I don't know a huge amount about them. Air-to-air -air weapons, not really, no. Air-to-ground weapons, uh, Hellfire, two variations of unguided rockets. I don't think it has bombs uh, and a chain gun that's quite cool, and you can aim that um, from either seat. Uh, graphics, oh, I do know about that, yep. Pretty much perfect, to be honest. Um, runs a bit laggy for me. I've got a moderately decent PC, I don't know, four years old or something. Uh, whenever I'm in this helicopter, particularly, it goes quite slow for me. Now, is that a me problem? Maybe, but it's just a, a thing. Sounds perfect as far as I'm aware. Kinematics, meh. Uh, feels like a big heavy tank, which I suppose what it is. If I want a helicopter that feels nice, I go to the Huey. Feels lovely. Um, as it probably does in real life. I don't particularly like how these big attack helicopters feel, but it's probably a me problem, to be honest. So I'm sorry, viewers, I don't have much opinion on this for the reasons I've said, so uh, you guys will give me a better idea. I think I'd rate this as my favourite module in DCS at the moment. I am flying it quite a bit, and it is epic fun. You can't approach it like with a, an MI-24 Hein, rush in with your rockets, you know, a wave of four or five Heinz all firing at the front line. You need to develop the tactic to hide behind hedgerows and buildings and stuff pop up. Get your CPG to pick out targets, lob off the, uh, particularly the radar hellfires. They're really good. Um, they're fire and forget. You can ripple off those very quickly. Um, the fire control radar, when it comes, will be a really big addition to this. You can just ripple off loads of radar guided hellfires, 16 of them against 16 armored targets, all prioritized. And it's, it, it promises to be fantastic when they've got that out in the public domain. In terms of the way it flies, yeah, it's quite resource heavy as a module. It's graphics very good. They could do with optimizing it a bit better. So it doesn't uh, stress your graphics card as much as it does. But overall, it is really, really good. Uh, I love it. I think it's such good fun. Yeah, I agree with Matrix on everything. He says the thing I don't like about it is the flight model that much. I don't think it's very representative of what a real helicopter does. But if you're need a helicopter to go take out ground targets this is the one i would pick yeah it's my go-to when i'm doing if it's available to ground assault or ground attack i'd rather have an apache um it is a complicated aircraft to learn i would say if you're coming from fixed wing aircraft uh you may want to look at the huey first get used to how helicopters operate in dcs in flight and then when you're ready go on to the apache um, I agreed. It is sometimes, uh, I've got a decent system. Um, it is very uh, intensive on the performance, um, but it's a fun aircraft uh, or fun helicopter to uh, shoot a lot of uh, tanks with. If you like helicopters and you like a lot of sensors and technology, this is the one for you. It's not difficult to learn to start the thing up from cold, get it airborne and fly around in it. It's much easier than the Russian helicopters. The complexity in this is the systems, and you can sort of get a surface level knowledge of the systems and do pretty well with it. But once you get into all the data link, all the networks and all that kind of stuff, all of the sensor stuff that you've got, that's where the complexity arises. That's what's difficult to learn. But at least you can get to a reasonable side of effectiveness without having to go that deep with it. Roger, just to jump in there very quickly. Um, yeah, the reasons I said I never learned it properly, but the cool thing about it, it does have a surface layer of ease on it. So if you want to fly in arcade mode, I don't mean that literally, but in easy mode, like I do, you can actually do that. And if you want to go full Milsim with it, obviously you can. I was going to say that if there was one module other than the F-15 that truly embodies the doctrine of own the night, it's the AH-64. No other helicopter can operate at night as efficiently as it does in the day like the AH-64. There you go. Um, I don't think anyone said go and buy it or not. Uh, Probably. You guys, you, you sound like you all think it's a good buy. It's it's a great module. It's worth it's worth the money. But if you're just dipping your feet into helicopters, it's a, I would say it's one of the helicopters that's on a, on a steeper learning curve. I, I do appreciate the fact that the George is highly competent, both in his flying of the AH-64 and of his operation of a lot of those uh, systems. So if you want, like, like Cap said, if you want to offload 
a lot of the system's usage from yourself onto George, he is more than capable of taking that stress off of you and equalizing that load to your level. Well done, guys. Let's move on. We're going to speed up now for obvious reasons. So we've got warbirds, and I'm going to roll them all into one pretty much. There are, what, seven or eight warbirds in different coalitions in DCS. They're all really, really good. Obviously, the older the one you buy, the less good your cockpit will look. It will still have the functionality, but the less good it will look. And the outside, maybe not quite as good as well. That said, they are slowly being modernized. So the older ones are being modernized with new cockpits. Uh, which one do you buy? You can't. They're, they're all fine. The only one I would suggest not starting with is probably the bomber. The mosquito it is a bit of a handful. But all of the others are really good starters. If you're interested in a high fidelity, very high fidelity, World War II warbird. Um, they're not pick up and play they need learning you have to understand how the piston engine works otherwise you'll just burn your engine out every time and get really frustrated if you want arcade e more of an arcade -er thing go to il2 game that has more world birds and they're much cheaper super high fidelity these ones they're great they all carry about the same weapons some dumb bombs some of them have some rockets and obviously they have gun and some have cannon um, some basic um, adf or uh, direction finding nav on some of them um, and that's it. So they're not very complex in that they don't have many systems, um, modern systems, but they are extremely good. They're actually my favorite uh, in terms to fly uh, pretty much all of them, especially the Mustang. And I think they produce brilliant missions. I'm aware they will never sell very many because most people want the closest they can get to an F-22, basically. But brilliant and one of the best things about the game, to be honest. But I don't want to drone on about them. Everybody should own one Warbird. Uh, they're great fun to fly. They teach you a lot of fundamentals to flight. They punish you if you hmm. fail at some of the fundamentals to flight. Any one of them that you pick is a good one. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, but none of them are just overwhelmingly. Uh, this one's just that much better than the, the other one. And all of them will make you an extremely good pilot very quickly, viewers, because of that crazy learning curve. Sorry. Uh, definitely improves your air to air gunnery and deflection shooting. My favorites are the 109 and the uh, Mosquito, oddly enough. My favorite is the Mosquito, and I gotta say, there's a lot of complex systems that are in that one specifically, mm -hmm. um, like the Radar Direction Finder. You can have a second person um, looking in the back, fiddling with all of the different sensor suites for and the radios to be able to do complex navigations, and the... Um, the camp, there's a campaign for it that's specifically built um that built up the uh, radio radio radio, di radio direction finder system that britain had in world war ii so that you could always find your airfield at night without having any kind of visual cues outside um that that's the level of detail that you're going to get with some of the campaigns that come from the mosquito itself i don't know about the other warbirds but definitely the mosquito is my favorite yeah, I don't have a lot of time at it. Mosquito is my favorite, too. All right, guys, let's move on. Black Shark 3. So I guess uh, I was going to say it's Russia's answer to the Apache, although that's not really true. But I guess it's a similar. It's an attack chopper. There was an old Black Shark, and now we have... And then there was Black Shark 2, and then we have the Black Shark 3. All that means is it's a, a slightly modernized, improved variant viewers with newer graphics and maybe a couple of systems added. So you buy this to either upgrade your Black Shark 2 or, you know, from scratch. I uh, forget exactly how it works. For me, it feels a bit like the Apache, a bit like driving a big heavy tank, which again, obviously, is what it is. It has moderately similar systems, uh, an old teapot type optical system. Um, interestingly, the Black Shark the Car 50, what this is, only a few of them were ever made. It was actually the Car 52 that went into mass production. Guided missiles, dumb rockets, laser riding missiles, bombs even amazingly uh 30 mil directional semi-directional cannon um with uh, plenty of 80s modern ish systems in it and plenty of quirks but a good solid chopper and a good module if you enter russian attack choppers which i'm not but a lot of you are not to get dig too deep into it the way you fly it is different than other helicopters with its uh trimmer like auto directional type flying system it is that twin rotor so it's enough different that if you want a different feel of flying a helicopter, it's a great module. Uh, Black Shark 3, like they said, added a lot of systems, but I'm just going to kind of keep it short and sweet with that. Yeah, I think it's the uh, easiest of the helicopters to fly because basically the autopilot's on the whole time. Uh, so it keeps it a lot stable. But I think 
I think it's probably of the helicopters I fly, it's the most maneuverable and it has to do with the, the dual main rotor system. You don't have to worry about uh, a lot of things you have to worry about with uh, other helicopters like hovering downwind or sidewind or any of that other stuff. Um, the thing I have a problem with it, you can't really see out of it very mm-hmm. well. But, uh, and also, like you said, the sensors are not quite as good as the AH-64. So um, I like flying it, but if I have to go shoot something, I'll take the Apache. Yeah, one thing to add also, it has a, it has the ability to do air-to-air. It's not the best, but um, you can shoot right. down stuff with um, air-to-air missiles on it. It takes a while to get used to them, but um, yeah, it's uh, it has a bit more capability than the Apache there only. I love the Black Shark 3. It is near and dear to my heart. It is as if somebody said, I want sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their frickin' heads, and they made a helicopter out of it. This helicopter is extremely fast. It's a single pilot against the world, whereas all these other attack helicopters, you've got a second person to be able to offload a lot of these uh, complex problems and systems off onto. With the Black Shark 3, it is you and the machine. That machine will do anything that you want it to do. It'll do backflips. It'll do barrel rolls. But you have to get skilled enough and have to want to become a part of that aircraft so much to be able to do it. It's it's hard. It's hard to start learning, but once you get good at it, it's probably the best um, long range sniper platform of the attack helicopters based on its long range cannon that can, that is so precise that it can swat out air moving aircraft side, uh, moving, moving transversal. It can swat them out with just a single gun push and a laser and a laser designation. It's it's cannon is absolutely wonderful. The Schwal is hard to use, especially at night. Um, you don't have a George, AI to be able to pick out targets for you. You have to be able to look in that floor and see it's Gen 1 or Gen 2 optics and be able to pick out targets miles away with it. But if you can do that, if you want to pick up the mantle of that challenge, the shark will never disappoint you. MB339, Italian training aircraft, subsonic, has dumb bombs, has rockets, nothing guided cannon pods it's pretty decent if you want an italian training aircraft i've got no problems with it anyone on mb339 i've uh, had it i've only flown it like three times don't go to sleep on the these small trainers light bombers uh light attack airplanes the teams that have built them they've put a lot into them they are fun little airplanes uh no you're not going to go mock mock one mock two in them but they are set up to give you a lot of lessons on principles of flight navigation and doing uh, calculated bombing runs. So own one of these. You don't necessarily need to own them all, but whether it's this, the C-101, or the L-39, all three are fun little modules. Yep, it's a training aircraft, so yep, it's designed to hone in on basic skills on jet aircraft. It is also an acrobatic aircraft used by some of the um, air forces around the world, so it has a little fun there. Matrix and I... um have had a little bit of experience with these uh, training aircraft before. I remember when I asked Matrix to teach me how to fly in IFR conditions. Um, What I noticed is these training aircraft have exactly the kind of format, front seat, back seat, that is conducive for teaching and learning the fundamentals. I appreciated being able to have live live feedback from from the back to the front as much as I did with that. Roger, they're all multi-crew, obviously, and don't think you can't have a massive amount of fun because you can if you're into that kind of thing. We've had great fun on those guys. Right, let's push on. Mirage F1, a really important plane in history that lots of countries have had viewers, 1970s, affordable export fighter bomber, uh, land-based aircraft, air-to-air radar of moderate power, uh, nav systems, uh, it has INS, it has uh, TACAN, I can't remember if it has ILS, sorry, no T-Pod, 
imagery or that kind of thing. Air-to-air -air weapons, moderate 1970s weapons, ranges of up to about, what, 15 miles maybe, guys, if we're lucky. Uh, Air-to-ground, a series of unguided bombs, unguided rockets, no guided air-to-air -air, as far as I'm aware, at least at the moment. Uh, there is, a, uh, sorry, one important thing, it comes in three variant, flyable variants, and one of them is a multi-crew variant, so you can have a multi-crew variant, which is great value for money, I must admit. Graphics, absolutely top-notch. Sound, uh, each to their own, and I'm not a fan of the sound. The engines are a bit weird, but nothing, no huge problems. Kinematics, I mean, it's terrible performer, I think, but the real plane, I think it's trying to model the real plane, which was a pretty, you know, it, it's not an F-16, put it that way. It's not a very good dogfighter, and that's how it's modeled, and so it's probably got it about right. So don't buy it to expect, because it looks sharp nose to out dogfight an F-16. It's obviously not. My kind of personal opinions are, uh, it's, it is good, uh, its cockpit is great, and it's very involved, its systems are great, and basically, as you would expect from a modern kind of 2023 aircraft, my only problem is it's so highly modelled that I don't fly it anymore, because see, there's several regimes of flight where the engine just dies on you, going back to what we said earlier, when some people like it when the wings snap off and the pylons break, and I hate it, and I hate flying a massive mission. And then halfway before I even get to my target, my engine fails because I was 69% throttle instead of 72% throttle. It's not what I'm interested in. And I wish there was a big tick box to turn it off so I would fly it again, but I won't. Uh, so I'm kind of stuck there. But that's just my personal opinion. Otherwise, really, really good. Cold War third gen asset. So just differentiating between third gens and fourth, gen, fourth gens. Yeah, you're not going to have the technology. It was built with a different flight profile in mind when they designed it. I like... Uh, developers have gone with this. I think they have taken some pages out of Heepler's book with uh, trying to make your experience more immersive with cockpit shake and a couple other things. I, I enjoy the, the multi versions of the F1 that, that we're getting so that you're not trying to do a one version of the F1 to fit all the different mission types and countries that have ever flown it. Decent module. Uh, is it a must buy? No. Would I tell somebody not to buy it? No, of course not. Yeah, good module. Just need to spend a lot of time to fine tweak it and get the best out of it. Uh, Mosquito, the only quick thing to say is that it's like the other Warbirds, but I include it separately because it's got extra systems modeled. It's twin-seater, so you can have a navigator and a human, and you can get brilliant fun out of that if you're into World War II. Its systems are very highly modeled. Like Sock said, there's radio direction finding, which can do some great role play, especially with two guys. So, And you can manage your fuel and do stuff like that. So I don't want to go any further other than to say it's just like the other Warbirds, but with, with a little extra oomph. Uh, brilliant. I wouldn't start with it. it. I think it's very hard to fly so it can be frustrating for a noob um we'll push on now guys hind um don't want to spend too much time but i you all know what hind is it's a troop carrier plus an attack uh guy with uh guided air to ground missiles guided air to air missiles uh unguided rockets i think it can carry bombs as well it can carry an assortment of gun pods and it's a twin barrel 30 mil non-aimable cannon it's multi-crew and in dcs it feels to me kind of like the Russian equivalent of the Apache and operates quite similar to the Apache, but obviously it doesn't have anywhere near the systems. It's an early 1970s aircraft as opposed to a late 1980s Apache. And I've had a lot of good fun on it, but um, I just don't really fly it anymore uh, for no real reason. Love the flight model. It's a big, heavy helicopter. It lets you know that. It'll punish you if you're making mistakes. Uh, it's got its own character. It's good fun. Yeah, it's uh, one of my least favorite, probably my least favorite helicopter. I'm not really into the Russian stuff anyway, and I can see that you need a particular mindset to operate this, and you need practice at doing it. So if you fly it a lot and you're used to it, it's probably great fun. If you're just dabbling in it, yeah, I, 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 yeah you're, you're not going to like it much. Yeah, definitely not a jump in and go set up air, um, helicopter. So yeah, I don't enjoy it. I thoroughly love the MI-24. I don't think I've ever made that a secret. Mixed reviews, but it is solid. It's solid. Absolutely solid. a c viewers, it's been out for what, 14 years now, so I don't want to go into it. Usually, it's an up, the 2 is an upgraded variant with some um, extra missiles. Very quickly, land-based, single crew, no radar, all types of navigation, modern targeting pod, Sidewinder air-to-air -air weapons, a huge assortment of ground uh, air-to-ground weapons, but I don't think any standoff weapons, by which I mean 100 miles or 50 more miles. So it tops out, I think, a Maverick, an APK WS laser-guided rockets, and JDAM bombs, so range, you know, five miles, something like that. If you're into loitering above a target, doing CAS-type work, uh, it's the best, obviously, and it has that lovely big gun. 
very complex, lots of systems to learn, not my cup of tea. Uh, so I don't fly it very much, but I'm aware that 99% of you seem to love it and a lot of you started with it. Uh, and the actual module quality is uh, brilliant as well. Just a word of warning for anyone going from the A10A to the A10C2, it is a different bird in complexity. A10A is the Flaming Cliffs, the low fidelity variant. The C is the high fidelity variant. Yeah, the, uh, it seems to be quite resource heavy as well. It's quite a complex mod module. It's all about that gun and it's probably a really good antidote to the Mi-24 Hind. Um, next I'm going for is the Thunder. It's a Pakistan plane. I would say an equivalent or an attempt equivalent to an F-16 in its intent. It's uh, nowhere near as kinematically powerful. Um, it has missiles that are about the same as the F-16 in DCS and its radar is about the same and whatnot. So it's a kind of slightly weaker variant of the F-16 in DCS uh, from a red coalition. Its systems is modeled well, uh, not quite as well as the F-16 and its sounds aren't quite as good, but I would say probably 80 to 90% as good in terms of modeling quality. Um, I never fly it because, um, well, how many fourth gen can you actually remember how to fly, right? So some have to go, and this is one that had to go for me. But I've got, to be honest, almost nothing against it. If you already fly the F-16, already fly the F-18 a lot, honestly, owning this module, you're not gaining a whole lot other than to say that you have a Red 4 version of the plane on its own. It's nice compared to those other two modules. It's not going to bring you anything new to the game. I agree. Um, so it's probably the easiest of the fourth generation uh, aircraft to learn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far as the systems go. It seems like it's the most straightforward, but it's got the capabilities just not there. I took off once in a, on a server, shot down six airplanes and 10 minutes and was out of fuel. I mean, that's an impressive regime, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm really impressed with the amount of weapons that the JF-17 has. It has the air launch cruise missile. Uh, it's a TV-guided cruise missile that not very many other aircraft can that are in DCS have the kind of capability uh, to have, as well as the Red 4 ability to have air-to-ship missiles. Yeah. If, if you're looking for a good multi-role Red 4 jet, the JF-17 is your option. Absolutely, Sock. And uh, sorry, viewers, I didn't go over the specifics. I'll do it now very quickly. Single crew land base, powerful air-to-air -air and air-to-ground fourth-gen mapping radar, all types of navigation. It has a modern Chinese targeting pod, equivalent to the Americans. Air-to-air -air weapons are Red 4 weapons, PL Chinese weapons, but equivalent to the American weapons in games, so you will compete with them. Air-to-ground weapons, uh, like a simplified Red 4 version of the F-18 weapons is what I would say. It has long-range standoff, it has long-range anti-ship, and it has uh, glide bombs, and it has JDAMs, and that kind of stuff. Not as many, and it can't carry as many, quantity-wise, as the F-18, but otherwise its capability is actually very good. I know we've not got a lot to say about it because we just don't fly it very much, but it does have a lot of capability, and all its sound uh, graphics and what. It is it's pretty top notch guys let's punch on does anyone want to mention anything about 1960s 1950s aircraft saber mig 15 mig 19 mig 21 i'm trying to round kind of the uh cold war old early cold war jet sub in one has anyone got any interesting things to say about it before we move on to things like harrier yeah i mean it's i do like the saber as a, as a module it's nicely re uh, nicely reproduced it's not very resource heavy it performs well um and i think it's if you're going to look for cold war jets and you want one to start with that's the one to choose mig 19 mig 21 the systems are well modeled if you want or want to start dabbling with early air-to-air -air radar and they're very limited ranges and they're limited like information you get in the return of those radars uh those mo both modules are really great they are uh, you have to fly the airplane. It's again, it's not one of those. You just let the stick go and it flies on its own. Just generally good fun. Uh, you got to learn switches. You got to learn a different way of thinking when you fly it, but it's good fun. A perfect little microcosm for the Cold War jets. It's the MiG 21's radar. It's operated off of a liquid coolant that only allows operation for a few minutes of time. So. <laughs> There's, with everything about a Cold War jet, there is a positive, but there is an there is a drawback for everything that you do. So you have to balance these capabilities with the drawbacks in a way that you're not going to have with the modern jets. Roger, I'll do my summary, guys. F-86 Sabre, MiG-15, MiG-19, MiG-21, 
an F5 Tiger. All different qualities and that some are earlier and some are later. But what's universal about them is that they're all super fun. They're highly modeled and whatnot, but they're all absolute. If you just want fun to get in there, their systems are limited. Obviously, they can fire either just early sidewinders or they just have guns. No, it's all it's all within about 10 miles. Um, some of them have got very simple early radars, but just absolute uh, fun. And some of them can be very easy to fly as well and none of them are, I don't think very system heavy as well and a lot of people have started with those early Cold War jets. Guys Yak-52 I've flown that in real life and um, in DCS it's actually great but anyway uh, AV-8B will be the next big jet it is a single crew carrier and land based it has no radar it does have some interesting sensors its own onboard type teapod and an exterior teapod various types of navigation including I think it has EGI it has air-to-air -air weapons, sidewinders, air-to-ground weapons, various munitions, guided, uh, laser-guided bombs. It has JDAMs. It has stun bombs of all types, laser-guided rockets, mavericks, uh, with ranges up to maybe 10 miles maximum. Uh, great little strike aircraft. Not much of a dogfighter, so stay out of dogfights if I were you, but it's up to you. In terms of how well it's modeled, its graphics are really good. Even still one of the best, I think. Even, you know, years down the line, five years or whatever it's been now. Top-notch sounds. Some people don't like the scream of the Pegasus engine, but that's, to be honest, exactly what it sounds like in real life. Kinematics, I think, are really good for what the aircraft probably would have been like. And I've got no problems with the flight model. It's pretty easy to stall, but that's how it was. And it's fully thrust vectored, and that's all modeled, which is pretty good. It's always been a, a favorite of a lot of people, and it's sold pretty well as well. Hence, probably why it's still $70. Uh, some people won't be interested in it, but a lot of people will. It's got no radar, so it's not going to do beyond visual range. But for striking, it's pretty good guys what do you think if you like to do casts in the a10 but you wanted to do it from a boat this is where the harrier comes in great naval complement to the land-based a10 and it's twice as fast so that does have some uses as well uh, it's, my it's only... one of my favorite, favorite modules um nicely modeled the flight regime flight model is really good particularly with the unique vertical th uh, vector thrust enabling short takeoff and vertical landings and it's it's unique so it has that unique appeal that you could take off a ship, come back and land vertically. It has performance limitations, but generally it's a very, very nice model. Yeah, my only gripe is I wish we had a Sea Harrier variant with a radar. It's just much more niche is the problem with it, but yeah, I get it, yeah. That's Harrier. It is genuinely good. A gazelle, I'm just going to breeze over this quickly. It's a light scout slash attack helicopter. It can come with guided air-to-ground missiles, guided air-to-air -air missiles, which have just, just been unbuffed, but are, but are still okay. Um, rocket air to, unguided rockets uh, and a cannon pod it's multi-crew and can be fully multi-crewed which is cool as i think all the helicopters can now yeah. be yeah yeah you are this is the navigation system my for apologies the guys yep yeah, i didn't even see yeah. that historically its flight model has always been a bit suspect and a lot of people complained about it uh, including me it's been improved it's still not as good as the other helicopters but it's much better now and i would actually for that price i would actually go and buy it to be honest it's limited ability because it's a small scout helicopter obviously it's not an apache it won't carry 16 missiles it's okay it's okay it still looks it's old really old it doesn't look terrible it looks okay and i'll describe it as okay still guys your thoughts it's a fun, neat little helicopter. I appreciate the multi-crew uh, uh, portion of it, the ease of use of the missile systems. Every time that I've done a dogfight against a against one of the gazelles in the hind, it's always dancing all over top of me, and it's extremely frustrating. Um, I, I really enjoy experience of fighting against them, although I don't fly them myself. Very quickly, Vigan, again, it's been out for many, many years, so I don't want to blast over it, but it is a 1960s Swedish strike aircraft limited air to air uh, ability with old style sidewinders it's land based it has relatively old style INS and radio based navigation it does not have a teapod it has relatively old standoff anti ship cruise missiles it has uh, unguided bombs it has old style maverick uh, guided air to air ground missiles with a range of about five miles maximum. It can have gun pods. Um, and I'm probably not selling it very well, its capabilities, but it is an extremely good module in DCS. The plane handles excellent. It's still modeled beautifully. Graphics, it sounds are still pretty much as good as you get. Its flight model is still pretty much as good as you can get. So old, but brilliant, 
very niche, obviously, if you want to do anti-shipping, if you want to do relatively close limited strike, it does have a guided cruise missile with only a range of about 15 miles or something like that. So limited, but very, very well modeled. Anyone on Vigan? I think it's the only aircraft to have a reverse thrust in the game, so it can do some interesting maneuvers to land very short and off field. If you're a member of the Vigan gang, wonderful. If you're not, you should be a member of the Vigan gang. Because <laughs> that makes such cool, eclectic points. Yeah, it's a cool aircraft. It's cool. It's retro. And you can get a, a gang-type philosophy with it and be included with it. O only thing I would say to the Vegan is uh, the employment of munitions are different than with 90% of the other modules that you fly. So it does have that unique feature of you will be kind of learning a different system and how to employ it. Roger, good point. It works very different to all other aircraft. Um, it has a very unique role in DCS as being able to uh, scout uh, behind enemy lines to be able to search for um, enemy, what is that, um, radar signatures? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, radiation signatures to be able to pinpoint uh, surface-to-air missile uh, sites and take that data back to be calculated later for harm strikes. Brilliant point there. Uh, again, 99% of you won't use it, but that's the kind of thing that's modeled, and that's because of the guys who made it are like that. Um, yeah, well done, guys. Moving on to Mirage. Very old. Don't want to go through it very much. Single land-based pilot air to air radar of medium capacity. I guess it's into fourth gen, limited fourth gen, I guess it would call it. Uh, no air-to-ground radar. Uh, all modern nav apart from Eggy. Uh, does not have a T-Pod, has air-to-air -air weapons of moderate capability, Sidewinder type heat seekers and Sparrow type uh, max 20 mile uh, Fox 1 weapons, air-to-ground weapons, mainly dumb munitions, uh, rockets, uh, bombs. It has laser-guided bombs, but it cannot laser itself because it does not come with a T-Pod. It's the kind of thing I should have liked because it's very underdog. It's the underdog of the 4th gen, probably the least powered of all the 4th gen aircraft here, and it is kind of niche and it is very French and quirky but I never got onto it I just never got on with the flight model graphics good sounds okay but the flight model always felt floaty and disconnected to me and a lot most of you will tell me I'm wrong and maybe I am but that's why I just, I just struggled to get in with it and so I never really done it that well Mirage anyone moderately briefly please yeah I think that the flight model is OP and the damage model is definitely OP uh, two major weaknesses for me of this module uh, if you can master it it is a lethal aircraft. Roger. Good fun module. Uh, it just kind of leaves you wanting a little bit more when it comes to the munitions that you can employ. Other than that, good module. Don't expect to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, an F-16 or an F-18. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise it's decent. I'm um, just going to see if there's anything else that we haven't covered. Uh, HIP and Hueys are uh, they're, they're really good helicopters. They're old. The graphics are getting a bit old. They come with unguided munitions only. And if you want to look into them more, we've done proper reviews on everything here where we can tell you about them. But they are still... My favourite helicopter is the Huey, and a lot of people's is the HIP. So much time gone into the modelling of the, the way they fly rather than the kind of would be radars and stuff like that so it's, it, they're just seat of the pants really good aircraft almost no cpu time so they don't slow the game down 100 percent recommended at those prices very briefly anything on huey and me eight guys everybody should it, own a huey yeah if you want to get into helicopters the huey is the way is there anything more fun than four guys on a huey with four miniguns absolutely not mm -hmm. i have to say for the mi8 if you enjoy driving old big 1970s 1980s buicks you're gonna love the smooth ride of the mi8 hip yeah it is an excellent it is an excellent blind model guys i just uh, looked ahead and uh, they are kind of like small segments uh, of flaming cliffs where you can buy separate airplanes and i wouldn't bother i would just buy the uh, main flaming cliffs there and i don't think i've missed anything obviously we've skipped over 99 percent of stuff for you isn't it? it's because it's such a big game that there's we can only cover the very basics what you really garner for this is our opinions you get to know us you get to know me you get to know simba you get to know push you get to know damp you get to know matrix and the other guys and you get a feel for what we like and then you think if you're a bit like me then you'll probably like what I like, or you'll probably like what Simba likes. That's the best thing you'll get from this. And we've been brutally honest and we've said the, the bad things as well as the good things, guys. I won't bother looking at the terrains, but if you want us to go back and look at the terrains, we will. Everyone, just shout out in sequence your best overall, my favorite, probably me, F-16. 16. F-18. Fixed wing, Tomcat. 
Rotor wing, hind. I'm an airplane slut. I like them all. I like what they all bring to the game. Uh, I enjoy the quirks, the ups and the downs of every airplane. Um, variety is the spice of life. And I like birds' opinions. Pop out Simba. Yeah, I agree with. You're flying the yak next time. I was going to say I agree with Simba. It depends on you know what I'm trying to do, um, which airplane is going to be favorite for the day or which helicopter. Obviously, there are very complicated modules here. And the best thing to do, I think, is read the manual, get on YouTube, watch some silly guy who talks about how to get them flying, um, and join a multiplayer server, which is like a training server, like the Stoneburner that Grim Reapers have, because it um, it uh, will allow you to you know practice and practice, and you'll find other people in there that you can maybe talk to and find out. So join a community, get involved, because that's the best way, I think, to learn these modules. Sorry, one more thing, viewers. Uh, as Bird was saying there, um, I did this. I don't do it anymore because I don't really need to, but this is DCS Modules, Buyer Guides, and Reviews. It's on my YouTube channel. It's a playlist where I've gone and done thorough, and I mean proper professional, not what we've been doing here, just about our opinions. Proper professional reviews of each aircraft, about an hour long each, into most facets of the aircraft to give a more empirical view at the modules and their capabilities. Like I said, I don't do them anymore because now there is free trials you can get from DCS and there's not much really point me doing these when you can just free trial an aircraft and look for yourself. But I suggest you use this as a resource as well, guys. Uh, that's it. Um, I will link it in the video description and I hope otherwise uh, you enjoyed this and bye-bye.